Hey everyone, and welcome back to Practical QA. Today, we are going to talk about building an effective test strategy. Whether you're a seasoned QA pro or just starting out, understanding how to lay down your testing foundations in a project is critical. So let's dive in. First off, what exactly is a test strategy? You know, many people confuse a test strategy with a test plan. A test plan is detailed, often documents specific to a release. A test strategy, however, is your high-level, overarching blueprint. It defines how you're going to approach testing to meet your project's quality objectives. It's about setting the direction, identifying the big picture, and ensuring alignment. It's a high-level document that outlines the objectives, scope, risk, approach, and resources for testing activities within a project. It's not the detailed test cases, but rather the guiding principles that ensure your testing aligns with project goals. So what goes into a good test strategy? Let's break down the core components. Scope and objectives. Test types and levels. Environment and data. Tools and automation. Roles and responsibilities. Entry and exit criteria. Risk management. Reporting and metrics. Let's start with scope and objectives. This is perhaps the most critical part. You need to define what will be tested, specific features, modules, integrations, and what you aim to achieve through testing. Imagine you're building an e-commerce website. Your scope might include the product catalog, shopping cart, and payment gateway. Your objectives could be to ensure users can successfully add items, mm, complete purchases, and that payment processing is secure. What you won't test, like third-party analytics dashboards, is also part of the scope definition. Next up, test types and levels. This is where you decide how you're going to test. Will you do unit testing, component, integration, system, accessibility, black box, user acceptance testing? What about non-functional testing like performance, security, or usability? For our e-commerce site, you'd likely have unit tests for individual functions like calculating sales tax, integration tests, to ensure the shopping cart correctly interacts with the inventory system, system tests, to verify the entire purchase flow from browsing to checkout, performance tests, to see how many concurrent users the site can handle during a flash sale, security tests, to check for vulnerabilities in the payment process. Now let's talk about environment, data, tools, and automation. You need to specify the hardware, software, and network configurations for your testing environment. Where will the testing happen, and what kind of test data will you use? Your e-commerce test environment might mirror production, a specific cloud server, a replica database with anonymized customer data, and certain browser versions. For tools, you might use Playwright for automated UI tests, Postman for API testing, and Jira for test case management. Defining your automation strategy here is key. What will be automated and what will remain manual? Crucial elements also include roles and responsibilities. Who is doing what? Then there are entry and exit criteria. When can you start a test phase and when can you finish it? Entry criteria for system testing might be all integration tests passed and all critical defects resolved. Exit criteria could be 95% test case pass rate and no critical open defects. Think about what are the potential testing risks and how will you mitigate them. Now let's talk about a component that often gets overlooked but is incredibly important, risk management. A good test strategy doesn't just plan for success, it anticipates potential pitfalls. This section is all about identifying potential risks to your testing effort and outlining strategies to mitigate them. What kind of risks are we talking about? Technical risks, like the test environment not being ready on time or data being insufficient. Project risks, such as changing requirements, tight deadlines, or budget constraints. Personnel risks, key testers being unavailable or a lack of specific skill sets within the team. The final core component is reporting and metrics. How will you communicate testing progress and results? What metrics will you track to measure the effectiveness of your testing? You might track the number of test cases executed, pass fail rates, defect density, and test coverage. 
This data helps stakeholders understand the quality status and make informed release decisions. A well-defined test strategy is your project's North Star for quality. It brings clarity, efficiency, and confidence to your entire testing process. If you found this helpful, subscribe for more practical QA insights.